Now that we've found the operating conditions we require from our pump, we need to go and find a pump that will deliver for us. Now in this instance, we were looking at a flow of 0.1 cubic meters per second and a head rise across the pump of 80.27 meters and we we're going to operate in water. Now, if we could go to the Grundfos site, they've got a selection tool that'll let us use those units for head and flow and select from a choice of pumps. Or we can go to the uh, Taco pump selections uh, system, and they're going to require us to know the head in, fleet, in feet and the flow in U.S. gallons per minute to find pumps. But let's go see what we can find at the uh, Taco site. Now, we'd like to get a standard pump. Our design flow, well, we said we wanted to have 0.1 cubic meters per second. We calculated before that that was 1,585 gallons per minute. And in fact, we're talking about 1,585 U.S. gallons per minute. But you'll notice here, being a U.S. company, they don't bother to mention that they're U.S. gallons. Our design head was going to be 80.27 meters, and when I convert, that turns out to be about 263 feet. And we won't specify a minimum efficiency. We'll just see, uh, see what we can find. Again, we'll, we'll leave all the other options here pretty much open. And, well, let's look at all the possibilities for pumps. We'll check out everything that they've got. And now I'm going to press the search button and see what comes back. Okay, I've got a variety of different pumps here. They've got pump curves here, and we'll look at some of them in a little more detail, but let's see what they're telling us about. Uh, this model, KS8016, whatever the heck that means. It's gonna need about 130 horsepower, so this is a fairly big pump we're talking about. NPSH of 16 feet, whatever that means, and we'll find out more about that later. It's going to operate at 1760 RPM with a standard electric motor drive. The impeller diameter is about 16 inches, efficiency about 80%, and the suction line and the discharge line are both 8 inch. So remember, we were designing this with 6 inch piping, and the fact that these are 8 inch suction and discharge lines suggests that maybe we went a little undersized on our piping. This one, well, we'll look at the curve a little later. Same horsepower, approximately, similar efficiency, about the same sized impeller spinning at the same speed, an 8-inch suction and a 6-inch discharge, so 6-inch might make sense, and it needs an NPSH of 9. And we'll look at that a little later on. We've got a whole selection of pumps here. They all have similar horsepower requirements, and they all have about the same sized impellers. Efficiency seems to be dropping off as we go down the list. And one of the things we might notice just looking at these thumbnails, this operating point here and here and here, those are all sort of in the middle of the graph. When we move further down to these ones that are lower efficiency, here and here and down here and down here, our operating point is moving off the edge of the graph. So without even knowing what the graph is about, we can tell that we're not in the intended range. The intended range obviously is somewhere over here. And that's sort of what you'd expect. That's why we're getting efficiencies down around 40%. So I think that would be a lousy choice as a pump without even looking any further. So let's go up to the top of the list here. This is the one, the KS8016, that got the biggest efficiency and looks like it might be a good choice. So I'll click on the, uh, on the curve and it's going to tell us a little bit more detail about this KS pump. And if I click on this thumbnail, I'll get an image that's a lot bigger. Now this is typical of the manufacturer's pump curves that you'll get from just about any manufacturer that describes the performance of a particular pump. And there's a whole lot of information on this graph. The first thing that we look at is the head flow curve. And what this is telling us is what the pump will do in terms of what the output head, the head rise across the pump will be, 
at different flows in gallons per minute. And what we see in red here, this is the, what it's suggesting for us, is that we'll have a flow that falls, or sorry, a head that falls off a little bit with increasing flow. So if we start with our 100 liter per second level, or our 1585 US gallon per minute level, either one is the same flow rate, we'll get a head that's around 260 some feet or looking over here about 80 meters. So that gives us a check that we did do our, our calculations correctly. So this red point here is the operating point where it thinks we should operate with this pump. And if we look at the rated curves, we've got this one here, this one here, and so on, and so on, and so on. So we can take the same model of pump, this 8016, and we can put different sized impellers in it. The bigger the rotating part, the larger the diameter of the impeller, the more flow you'll get for, for a given head, or the more head you'll get at a given flow. So for example, at our design flow rate of 100 liters per second, if I had a 16 and a half liter or a 16 and a half inch pump, I would get an output head of about 280 feet. If I had a 15 inch impeller, I'd get an output head of only about 235 feet. And if I had a 14 inch impeller in the same casing, I'd get an output that was under 200 feet in head. So I really need to go to a big impeller in this casing in order to get the, uh, the head that I need to drive the flow that I'm looking for, this 100 liters per second or 0.1 cubic meters per second out through the piping. Now this red line you'll notice is just a little bit below the 16 and a half inch line. And what that's telling me is that their selection would say, if we buy this pump, we'll buy it with a 16 and a half inch impeller and we'll have that impeller milled down before we take delivery of the pump and milled down to a somewhat smaller diameter. So interpolating there, that would probably be about a 16 and a quarter inch diameter impeller. That would be just the 16 and a half inch diameter impeller with some of the outside milled off to make it a little smaller. That means it'll operate at a little lower head output and we won't have to put quite as much power into it to, uh, to drive the flow that we're looking for. Which brings us to power. If that's my operating point, then I'm sitting partway between this dashed line here and this dashed line here. Now this dashed line corresponds to 125 horsepower and this dashed line corresponds to 150 horsepower. So those are lines of differing levels of power. So the higher the head and the higher the flow, remember power is rho g h q, the higher the power that we need to put in to drive the pump. What else can we find on this graph? Well, this operating point, it's sitting just below 80% or maybe right on that 80% efficiency, ISO efficiency line there. If we were pumping a little more, a little more flow rate through, we could move up into this region up here where we're getting to 82 or 83 or even 84% efficiency on the pump. So we could have higher efficiency if we matched the curve a little better, if we were more in the sweet spot right in the middle here where the pump is operating at its maximum efficiency point. But still out here at 80%, that's still pretty good. What else can we find from this curve? Well, there's this line up here labeled required NPSH. And remember, we saw that in the table. <coughs> if I go up here from my design flow rate and I go across, that tells me that I'm going to have a required NPSH in the neighborhood of 15 feet. Now let's go back to our previous page here and see what the specifications said about it. It said I was going to need an NPSH of 16 feet. So my reading off the graph of 15 feet was pretty close. 
It said I was going to need a uh, horsepower to drive at the operating point of 132 horsepower. So yeah, somewhere between 125 and 150. 80% efficiency. It's done all of this interpolating onto the uh, on the graph for us to get the specifications for that operating point. So this might be a good choice uh, choice for my pump.